Welcome one and all to the shining sixth season of Puppet History! Everything is different now! No longer will two innocent students be pitted against one another for our amusement, senselessly competing for the nonsensical title of History Master or that finally meaningless coveted cup. That format was exploitative, cruel, and on behalf of the former murdered me, I apologize. Somebody read their own Reddit page. <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward, we'll be taking an ever-winding look at yet more chapters in the heavy, heavy book we call history, while our guests ruthlessly compete for the coveted title of History Wizard and the right to don the coveted cap. I, as always, and for the first time, am your beloved host, The Professor. Thank you in advance for your cooperation. Now, it is my great pleasure to ask, Ryan Bergara, my dear friend, are you ready? Sure, man. Love the, the getup. You're in your, like, Beatles era. Oh, and you just wait. You'll find out. The getup is what you notice, not his brand new face. Special guest, Stephen Lim, are you ready? Oh, it's great to be back here. For some reason, in my mind, I thought you died. But then I remembered uh, <laughs> that was sort of the, the whole Black Plague thing. Wait, Outside oh my gosh. The last time I've seen you face to face. I was warning you about the dangers of a pandemic. And I laughed about it. Yeah, you did, you piece of shit. Oh, yeah, try I'm looking sorry. up from your phone, dude. I apologize yeah, to everyone. Everybody. Well then, let's crack in! Your hair looks good uh, this season, Professor. Yeah. Oh my god, you don't have a hat! I don't want to wear my little hat anymore. It's crazy! Come touch my fuzzy little head! <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is pretty cool. Are you I'm, bigger? I'm bigger, but I'm still just a little guy. <laughs> Are you guys ready to learn? Yeah, sure. Hey, to begin, what kind of music you like? I listen to pop music. You listen to pop music? Pop. You know, whatever's on the radio these days. I listen to pretty much everything, honestly. Reggae. Yeah, there's some reggae. I like Bob Marley. Well, today it's easy to take for granted the infinite ocean of musical genres, artists, and songs available in your cellular telephones. But, like everything, it wasn't always like that. Only a couple hundred years ago, if you wanted that hip new sound, you had to wait for someone to play something new in your presence. And if you wanted something you've truly never heard before, well, then you gotta find the true pioneers, the folks building their very own instruments. It is interesting that there was an era where people were just making up instruments. Yeah. I mean, there was a whole span of time there where people were like, yeah, what about a little instrument that goes wop wop wah? Or what about one like this? Oh gosh. What? I, what? Hang on. I, the entire. Wait, no, wait, shh, shh, shh. Yeah. Yeah. Is it uh, integral that you do that face? <laughs> these, these are what founder meetings are like, by the way. <laughs> Just FYI. This, this is how we started Watcher. Our story today is about one such inventor, a man whose dreams about sound revolutionized music forever, and the myriad ways the universe hated and punished him for it. Let's talk about sax, baby! Adolf Sax! It just hit me that the guy's name was Sax. Yeah, can like, you venture to guess what instrument he invented? The, I mean, if I had a... Probably the violin. <laughs> He's zagging on us. <laughs> Antoine Joseph Sachs, that's Adolf to you and me, was born November 6, 1814 in Dinant, Belgium. The first of 11 children, Adolf's dad, Charles, was a successful and respected maker of musical instruments, specializing in brass and woodwinds. When Adolf was still young, King William I of Orange, the new king of the Netherlands and Grand Duke of Luxembourg, brought Charles to his newly established royal court in Brussels and appointed him Belgium's chief musical instrument manufacturer. Ooh, our first question of the season! What was the main job for Belgium's chief musical instrument manufacturer? A. Create instruments for use at the Royal Concert Hall. B. Create instruments for the army. Or C. Create instruments for the hundreds of entertainers in the king's court. The way you set us up, it felt like we were going to be in a collaborative learning environment. I mean, do you guys want to? Maybe not with this guy. Oh, but. No, okay. 
You don't want to collaborate with the guy who crosses his eyes and plays his belly button? I didn't cross my eyes. You look pretty fucked up, man. Man, that's what happens when you feel the music running through you. I guess. Ryan, uh, what you got over there? I'm gonna put B. I just love the idea of a flute that shoots bullets. You would want them to be able to play a tune, but also double function as a weapon if yeah. need be, like a bayonet on top of a saxophone. Well, a bayonet would probably be better on a trombone, right? Because then yeah. you, oh, you yeah. could shoot yeah. that thing. You could stab so many you could, people. You could stab them while going, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Steve, what'd you put? I also put B, Battle oh. of the Bands. My beat boys are out here. Beep, 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 buzz, buzz. Are you gonna pop out your belly yeah. button for hey, the beat? Yeah, hey. pop it out, bud. Two times, you gotta pay for it. <laughs> oh, all right, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll pay you right now. Five bucks. The do it. Fuck yeah, dude. Drop that beat. Boys. You know what? I want it near your mic, so here we go. Oh, yeah, get in there. I want it near your mic. Boys. 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 Yeah. You know where that? I'm a We're having fun this season. I'm here. What are you doing? We're fucking doing it, man. All right. Well, that's going to be beans all around for my beautiful beat boys. Hey. Hello, five. Yeah. My beat boys. Strong. Yes, sir, it's been true throughout history and remains true today. If you owned a business, the surest way to prosperity was to set those morals on a shelf and score yourself some of that sweet government cheese. Ideally, in the military. But the question remains, why would an army need a bunch of instruments? Well, back in the first half of the 19th century, regimental band music was a crucial element of military prestige and prowess. If you wanted a foreign nation to respect your military might, short of trying to murder them with bullets, you could instead play them a sample from your band camp. During this era, music was such an essential part of the armed forces that military victories often meant you got to take all the instruments from the losing army. Oh, that's amazing. Don't take my flute. You shoot a bunch of people, get a Rickenbacker guitar. Sure. Yeah, you, you kicked my friend's asses, Ooh. but don't take my flute. Well, they're that's dead. What you're gonna do. They'll pry it from your cold, dead hands. Bullshit. I'm trying to think if we were in a war, what I would want from you, but I don't think there's anything you have. <laughs> That, that'd be like, feels, feels pretty rude. I gotta, I gotta feels very that. rude. With his dad collecting that government paycheck, one would think young Adolf must have lived the carefree life of a happy Belgian child, munching on waffles and pissing in fountains, the type of European childhood fairy tales are written about. But such was not the case for our little Brussels sprout. <laughs> hey. <laughs> that was funny, huh? It was good. <laughs> How did Adolf spend his youth? A. Learning military tactics from his father's army clients. B. In and out of Belgian jail for disturbing the peace. Or C. Stuck in a Final Destination-esque death loop. Ryan, what'd you put? I put A. Learning to mass murder. Okay, and Steven? Uh, C. Final countdown? Well, a point for Stephen Lim. Hey! Now, it's unclear the nature of the curse that seemed to be placed on Adolf's head as a boy, but listen to this list of events and tell me nothing was up. At age two, he tumbled down two flights of stairs, bonking his head on a little rock so severely that he was comatose for a week. At age three, he chugged a glass of sulfuric acid, which he thought was milk, which may have only been one of four substances that he poisoned himself with, including white lead, copper oxide, and arsenic. Okay. Wait, when you're two and three, you can't be held responsible for your actions. This sounds like parental negligence. Well, but. you know, you can't be leaving glasses of sulfuric acid out. <laughs> Around yeah, where your was, kids. Yeah, why was there a glass of sulfuric yeah. out? I don't know what they're up to Honey, where should I put this glass of sulfuric acid? Oh, I'll put it in the fridge. He once swallowed a needle. He jumped onto a burning hot stove. Some gunpowder exploded in a workshop, which threw him across the room and left his body badly burned. A tile dislodged from a roof and fell on his head. And at age 10, he fell in a river and was about to be pulled into a whirlpool until he was saved by a villager. By the time he was a teenager, Adolf's head was scarred and half his body was covered in burns. Cool, but he'd survived the gauntlet. And God damn it, if he wasn't gonna make something of himself. So he looked like Darth Vader, kinda. It sounds like it was only half his body though, so he had big Harvey Dent energy. Okay, so Harvey Dent yeah. more. Well, that's quite the rap sheet. This all seems pretty wild. I mean, how wild is it for that time period though? Like, these are just like normal things back then. You know, I guess tile on your head, nothing you could do about that. Just 
just looking up right now, I could see about six or seven things that would instantly There's kill me. There's a lot up there. Yeah, for sure. Well, between regular brushes with death, Adolf was quickly learning his father's trade, surpassing his old man in both skill and ambition. By age 15, his instruments were already good enough to display at the Brussels Industrial Exhibition. By 20, he'd invented his very own instrument. That was, of course, say it with me, the sax. The bass clarinet. I knew it. Gotcha, Steven. You son of a gun. You wait. knew it, so you'll get a history point for knowing that I was zagging. <laughs> oh, wait, that makes sense, though. The shape of the bass clarinet is similar to the shape of the sax. It is. It's got that weird neck. I was oh. thinking of the more Squidwardy kind of clarinet, but no. Uh, I played that clarinet. You did? Yeah, me and Lizzie both played the clarinet. Do those reeds taste good? No. Mm. And they get disgusting. Yeah, do they sell I'm flavored sure. ones? They actually do. They That's do? That's a good idea, dude. <gasps> I had some because they were so disgusting. Well, in fact, the bass clarinet already existed. But the version that people knew before Adolf got his mitts on it, uh, sucked. Adolf transformed the bass clarinet from a, quote, unreliable and mostly unplayable instrument into a regal, elegant woodwind that provided a rich bottom to any instrumental configuration and remarkably played in tune. The newly rehabilitated instrument had quickly been adopted as a standard member of the woodwind group and its inventor acknowledged as an engineer of great promise in the musical capitals of Europe. I've played on some bad clarinets before, like the $200, $300 ones. Yeah. They don't compare. What's the worst you've ever played in front of an audience? Once we were playing the Harry Potter theme song, <laughs> or whatever, whatever it's called. And, can we uh, put a picture up of young Steven right now so we can get some context for who's carrying this clarinet? And man, I, I ruined that. Uh, that <laughs> yes, sir, Adolf was well on his way to being a somebody in the cutthroat business of instrument manufacturing. But take my word for it. When you start making big waves in a stodgy, stuck-in-the-past industry, you're going to make some enemies. With his invention of the new and improved bass clarinet, a jealous bass clarinetist who played the old, barely listenable version of the instrument threatened to quit his orchestra if they adopted the new version. Ooh. Hey, how did Sax respond? A, he challenged the guy to a musical duel. B, he challenged the guy to an arsenic swallowing contest. Or C, he challenged the guy to a good old fashioned gun duel. Oh, a Hamilton situation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys having fun? <laughs> yeah, oh, I, man. Okay. I'm having a blast. Well, I was it's... gone for so long, I forgot. You know, you know believe in yourself a little bit more. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no no, no room for that crippling self-doubt. There's only room for one person to do that on this set, and it's <laughs> fucking me. <laughs> cool. All I've right. never seen someone be so confident with their lack of self-esteem. <laughs> you know, it's an art form and I've perfected it over the years. It's really good. Beefy baby, what do we got? Ah, uh, hey dude, play it dipshit, let's go. <laughs> okay, and Stevie? That one is the obvious answer, so I'm going to see Alexander Hamilton, winner take all. Okay, well we're gonna find out via the magic of theater. Bye bye. Voila, my masterpiece. The thing I'll forever be known for inventing, the bass clarinet. Fah, mm. fah, I say. I am one of the greatest bass clarinetists in Brussels, and I say fah. If your instrument replaces old tutors here, I'll quit the band. You are a stubborn fool, and to prove it, I challenge you. Oh, to what, a gun duel? Yes, except instead of guns, we will use music. I accept the terms. You go first. Very well. Uh. Hmm. Well, if that's the best you can do, I hope you're ready to be branded a loser. Prepare your ears for the erotic sounds of my horrible clarinet. Ta-da! Hmm. I think I'm going to take the W on this one. Yes, I sounded very bad. <laughs> Whee! That's a point for Beef Boy! In an industry rife with proud, egotistic men, Sack stood out as especially arrogant and would often embarrass his detractors in musical duels. With lots of big ideas and the musical chops to back them up, Adolf spent most of his 20s honing his craft in Belgium, making quite a name for himself in the instrument-making racket. How do you even know how to make an instrument? How does anyone know how to make anything? I can't, how did they I, do it? How did they do anything. it? How did anyone make a cake? 
You know? <laughs> if I had to invent a shoe, it would look so bad and probably too small for most people. Is it because you never wear shoes? Oh. Yeah, that's what uh, I thought. You can have my shoe. By 1841, at age 27, Adolf was working on something big. He was going to be presenting a new instrument, this time totally original, to the Belgian National Convention. An early iteration of the, that's right, saxophone. This was a huge deal. The last new instrument to be introduced in Western music was the clarinet more than a hundred years prior. Wow. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's a long time to go without a new instrument. Wow. New instrument just dropped. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> now, Sax wasn't just hitting that fat brass so he could make money. He was trying to solve a legitimate problem in orchestras. As author Michael Siegel describes in his book, The Devil's Horn, quote, in an orchestra, the strings were often overwhelmed by the woodwinds, which in turn were overpowered by the brasses. Sax had created an instrument with the tonal qualities of the woodwinds, the projection of the brasses, and the flexibility of the strings. Essentially, Sax envisioned his horn to be the rug that would tie the whole orchestra together. Is this the last instrument that was invented? Because I just realized how excited I would be if it got announced that like the Philharmonic is gonna have a new instrument they're gonna debut. It's like a big fucked up horn. Like a beep! Like <laughs> yeah, like a big old like rip. Yeah. Like a oh, like a like a noise that. like <laughs> Yeah. Barks like a dog. Barks like a dog. It's just a fucking dog. Well, unfortunately, the music world wasn't reacting to Sax's new phone with much celebration. Reportedly, the exhibition refused to give him first prize because he was too young, informing him that, well, if they gave him this prize now, there would be nothing else for him to win later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's bullshit. We've all been there in our careers. People die all the time. Give them their accolades when they're young, you know? Agreed. Appreciate I got eaten by a dinosaur. That's true. What was hell like? Uh, I didn't actually see hell. I feel like you saw hell. I feel like you're lying to me. Why did you assume you went to hell? I mean... Did he go to heaven? We could run a whole video reel on why he would go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an nasty little guy. <laughs> <laughs> there are also reports that a competitor at the exhibition saw the early saxophone and kicked it across the floor, breaking the instrument and Sax's heart. Damn. Oh my god. That's nasty. Band kids are feral. Yeah, they're competitive. They just challenge each other to get the first chair. A lot of angst in band kids. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like in basketball or like a sport, you get all that out. Band, you just gotta sit there yeah. and listen to this fucking guy solo next to you. And loving every second of it, too. I was a nervous creature. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call yourself a creature, dude. Well, the Belgian National Convention of 1841 was the last straw for our grumpy little sax. He wasn't getting the respect he felt he deserved stuck in podunk Brussels. In 1842, Adolf Sachs took his talent to Cosmopolitan Perry, where he hoped he would find an urbane crowd appreciative of the funny-looking horn he'd named after himself. Unfortunately, Paris wasn't all baguettes, sex, and declares. For most of his time in Paris, Adolf lived in poverty. Albert Remy, one of Adolf's biographers, describes Adolf's time in the City of Lights as, quote, a prodigious, tormented existence, darkened by dire experiences and upheld with courage and fortitude. Mm. Which is also what Bergara says to me any time I ask him how his weekend was. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that in confidence, but yeah, it's fine. Now, Adolf Sachs clearly had a great idea. He just needed to spread that idea. So he decided to take a page from his father's score. He sought a deal with the government to outfit the French military band. To secure this contract, Adolphe presented his new and improved saxophone at the 1844 Paris Industrial Exhibition, including to Lieutenant General Comte de Rumini, the king's aide-de-camp. De Rumini was blown away by Sax's phone and thought it was just the thing needed to revitalize the French military's less than exceptional band. De Rumini arranged for Sax to give a performance for King Louis Philippe, Queen Marie Amélie, and their sons. He made him have like that ratatouille moment. Yeah. When he, mm. when he bites into the ratatouille, he sees his whole childhood flash before his eyes. Yeah. If I had never heard a saxophone in my life and someone walked into a room and started going like, bah, 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 I'd be like, holy shit! 
I, I, me too. I'd be like, dude, that's the best sounding thing I've ever heard in my life. And why does he not have a shirt on? Yeah, it's a sexy instrument. You get real sweaty when you play it too. Yeah. I wish that was a rule, honestly. That you could no never, shirts? You could never play a saxophone with a shirt on. No shirts, yes sax, no problem. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> now, coming off this momentum, Adolphe wrote the French Minister of War, laying out his plan to totally overhaul the sound of France's military, courtesy of the hot new sound provided by his sexy little saxophone. Now, there was only one man standing in the way, the director in charge of training the military's band, Michel Carafa. Carafa was one of Adolphe's many detractors, and he had submitted his own saxophone-free plan to revitalize France's war sound. This was such high stakes that a simple symphonic duel wasn't going to settle matters. There needed to be a whole battle of the bands. The date, April 22nd, 1844. The place, Paris's Champ de Mars, a big park that would, in a few years, have a big pointy steel tower erected above it. The combatants, Adolf Sachs versus Michel Carafa. Both men had assembled 45-piece orchestras, but Adolf was at a disadvantage. Ooh. What was the disadvantage? A. Someone had bribed members of Adolf's orchestra to not show up. B. Someone had switched out all of the sheet music for Adolf's songs. Or C. Someone had poisoned Adolf the night before. Oh, damn, a, a Jordan flu game scenario. Yeah. He knows what I'm talking about. You know that's when he, had, talking about. Well, he knows what you're talking about. Yeah, okay. that's when Jordan had the flu, but he also had a game. <laughs> Actually, uh, he ate some bad pizza. He had bad pizza? Yeah, that's what, that's the real story. Yeah, but the rumor is that the people who made the pizza did it on purpose. No, 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 no. It had been sitting out for a while. Well, hey, uh, wait, I, I have an All idea. Right. Why don't you guys answer the fucking question? <laughs> I can talk about sports more. How about, how about, how about we talk about sports? See flu game. See flu game. A. Money, please. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty oh. good. Well, a point for Stephen Lim. Hey! Woo, 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 woo! You got it. You got <laughs> You're your business so boy here. Yes, at least two bass saxophonists didn't show up on the day, and some reports claim Adolph's band was 20% smaller than the competition. This only motivated sax further. And he showed up to lead his band with two instruments strapped to his side. Oh shit, dude. Double wielding! Insane! Now get a load of this. 20,000 people showed up to witness the carnage of battle. Though applause-o-meter technology was still centuries away, it was clear who won by the reaction of the crowd. So they did it Apollo style, or yeah. like uh, you got served style. Exactly. That's cr amazing. Who do you think won? You know, I'm gonna go with sax because there's a reason why the saxophone is around. I mm. assume it's because the sax mm. played mightily mm. and everyone was like, damn, what's that sexy instrument mm. and where can I get the nearest hotel room? Mm. <laughs> mm. Well, in fact, sax kicked Carafa's brass. Part of the victory could be attributed to the plain fact that they had an easier time hearing sax. Imagine a crowd of 20,000 people trying to hear a concert with no sound amplification. Making instruments loud, however, was Sax's bread and butter. His original instruments, plus the modifications he added to the traditional instruments, meant more people could hear and react to his band's sounds. Sax emerged triumphant, the quote, talk of Paris for days. I'm just imagining how goofy these modifications looked, like some Doc Brown giant, you know the thing they put on like a dog's head so it doesn't lick its balls Oh yeah, after? I assume it was conical. Even like the shape of the sax today, I get it now, it's like, it's pointing up so that the sound comes oh. out Whoa. at you, like yeah. a megaphone. Whereas the clarinet, we're going down. You're going straight we're down. We're going straight down to the ground. He's right, that's a good point. You're right. Physics. Well, the French military immediately adopted the saxophone and, wouldn't you know it, started winning more musical contests. For his part, securing that fat government contract finally meant a bit of financial breathing room for Adolphe. Unfortunately, it also intensified the hatred that every other music man in Paris felt toward the Belgian import. I mean, hey, you know, you start picking up some popularity, you're gonna get your haters, baby. Well, we should be thankful for our haters. Do you have haters? No. I'm thankful for my haters. haters. I'm thankful for my haters every day. Me too. I'm thankful for my haters. They make me stronger. Exactly. Every morning I say in the mirror, if you hate me, thank you.
By this time, the fierce rivalry Saks had with more or less everyone had grown into an entire lifestyle. Sax's enemies formed a coalition with the express purpose of destroying the saxophone and with it, Sax's life. The Association of United Instrument Makers, as the group was known, had a president, a treasurer, and dues-paying members. And they pursued every possible avenue to destroy Adolf Sachs. Sounds like Twitter nowadays, honestly. <laughs> Shit, dude. Jeez, Sounds like someone does have some haters. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. The group filed countless lawsuits against him, not just to try and financially ruin him, but also so he would be tied up in court instead of hanging out in his workshop absolutely dominating the industry. In fact, a big reason why the saxophone looks how it does was in response to one of the myriad frivolous lawsuits thrown at him. The German chapter of the group, that's right, it was international, made an instrument with a similar shape, hoping to compete with the saxophone, but its sound paled in comparison and it fell into obscurity. Sax's foes would even bribe his employees to abandon sax and steal his specialized tools. I don't understand the concentrated hate for this, like, saxophone. Did this guy do something else, like, behind the scenes ah. that we're not aware of? Did he bang these people's wives? Maybe or? people thought it was just an obnoxious noise. It's loud. It you is know, a loud instrument. And also, it's a modern-sounding instrument, you know? It's got that new, new sound. It's, it's like people hating on BTS when they came on the scene. Right, you right. Know, they're objectively a good band with great music, but yes. then it's easy to hate because they're not the classical music that you They're like, not used the to. Beatles! Well, despite all these efforts, Sax continued to absolutely wipe the floor with his opponents in musical duels. At one point, 12 of his saxatubas, that's right, there are other instruments in the sax family, were able to drown out a reported 1,500 instruments. Just play that scenario out, though. I'm very doubtful oh. they set this up. A, a group of 12 people versus 15. Yeah, that's a lot of people. Whoa, that's a wait, lot but of you, people. Got, you got to see this instrument. This is wait, wild. Wait, is it? <laughs> oh, shit, it's fucking huge, dude. dude. I would see you playing this thing. Oh, my God. Can we show this? With no one able to compete with Sax musically, his antagonists resorted to attempts on his life. One would-be assassin ended up stabbing an employee of Sax's to death instead of Sax himself. It's another pro of not living with Instagram, too. No one really knows what you look like. Yeah. If Sax were alive today, he'd probably be all over the Instagram. Yeah. Know? He'd want to get it out there, like, yeah, check out this instrument. He'd be all over TikTok. When you say it that way, I would probably start to hate him if my yeah. feed just kept getting, like, overpopulated mm. by a dude playing a saxophone. You'd hear that little TikTok voice being like, Check out this new instrument. Oh God, I fucking had it with the Siri voice, dude. <laughs> What's she Please. doing? They gotta stop that. Just stop it. Another put a whole ass bomb under Sax's bed, only to see it explode prematurely because of a faulty fuse. If only these a-holes had known what everyone in Belgium learned when Sax was a wee boy. Adolf Sax could not be killed. Then, in early 1848, Adolf suffered the biggest blow to the saxophone's rise. What happened? A. Adolf Sax was finally murdered. B. The invention of the guitar. Or C. Revolution. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Here we go. Uh, what would B. Bergara guitar, baby? Because oh, you all yeah, know baby. I played the guitar for that couple months when I, you don't I got my heart guitar. broken. You don't yeah. play the guitar. And then I never picked it up again. Uh, B. Got hit with that G string. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Boys, we got B boys again. Hey. Huh? That's right, dude. Beep, 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 boys. Beep, 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 boys. I know you're trying to coax another belly button playing out, but it's not gonna happen. You I told know what you. I'm trying what to do. What if I then Come on. you? Come on, beep, 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 beep boys. Beep, you know what? <laughs> so you can hear it a little better. Here we go. Come on. Here we go. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Come on. Why? Why is it weirder for you to do it to him than to me? Stand up in front of the theater. All right, here we go. Play your belly button. Yeah. 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 I gotta yeah, say, I got my, a little hot and bothered there. Wow. I gotta say, my angle of that was not the best. All right, let's find out via the magic of theater. Woo. Another day, another dollar. I hope the king wants some more instruments. All oh, these uh, lawsuits are getting a little pricey. Uh, bonjour. How may I help you? Uh, yes, I'm here to see the king. Oof. Well, a bit of bad news. The king has been uh, deposed. 
He's been deposed? Oui, we fired him. It's a French Revolution, you know, but uh, not the big one. The king's gone, but I can tell the new rulers you're here if you want to talk to them. What's your name? I am Adolf Sex. Oof. What? Well, your Adolf Sex is in the saxophone, right? Well, the very same. Finally, some recognition. Oui. Well, because your instruments are now pretty associated with that old king's army, and since we're not big fans of that old king's armies, every instrument with your name on it is banned from uh, bands. Oh. Oui. Okay, so au revoir. Fuck me. Fuck. Fuck this shit. This is such a weird thing. He's given humanity a gift here. And they're making it very hard for him to give that gift. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, yeah, points for neither of you. It took a literal revolution to get the soulful sound of that sweet, sweet saxophone out of France. The only good news for sax was that in 19th century France, you never had to wait too long for another revolution. By 1852, a mere four years later, Napoleon III, not to be confused with Bonaparte, overthrew the Second Republic and seized dictatorial powers. Two days after taking power, one of his first acts as ruler, Napoleon III, restored the saxophone to regiment on Sundays. Well, unfortunately for our boy, the good news didn't last long. In 1853, and for the next several years, Sax's life was made incredibly difficult by a cancerous tumor growing on his lip. The tumor resisted treatment, growing to a, quote, grotesque size, making eating impossible and even threatening to suffocate him. Of course, the horrible irony is that if Adolf couldn't breathe, he certainly couldn't make his funky horn sing. By 1858, he basically had two options. He could die, or he could try to survive surgery that would remove half of his jaw. Sax, never one to conform to the options laid out before him, turned to a doctor from India named Dr. Vries, who gave Sax an Ayurvedic treatment, basically secret herbal extractions from India. Six months later, the tumor started to shrink until it disappeared completely. Again, worth saying, Adolf Sax could not be killed. Like an herbal remedy that works on a tumor? I guess. Wait, what the what? fuck? Yeah. Weird, huh? Do they use whatever that guy gave him now, today? I don't know, maybe it was a very specific kind of tumor. I mean, I've never heard of anything like that. That's like the craziest thing in this whole story. It's a good story, right? It is a good story. Yeah, I'm just curious. I, wouldn't, I think they should implement that more then. Yeah. Well, that brings us to 1894, when Adolf Sax caught lousy old pneumonia and died at the age of 79. At the time, he was working as a stage manager at the Paris Opera House and living off a small pension that he'd successfully begged from the French government, hoping it would give him, quote, a few hours of peace and a life consumed by trouble. And as we heard, he wasn't lying. Because of how he'd been hounded by his adversaries, he'd been forced to declare bankruptcy three times in his life and sold off all his rare instruments and handmade tools. Wow, what a sad instrument. Yeah, I mean, it's sad and sexy at the same time. You're a band guy. Was there any kind of like stereotype to a saxophone player? I always, I always regretted not playing the sax. Oh. oh. Because it's so cool. It's definitely cooler than the clarinet, I'll say that. For sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, for sure. Hands down. Yeah. Lizzie's yeah. shaking her head, but. Sorry. It I is, think that's it also is. why she doesn't understand that it's cooler. I also wish I, I played trumpet, because people say that trumpet Yeah, one players, of the coolest uh, instruments yeah. there ever was. They say that they uh, made the best kissers. Mm, that's true. That sounds like something people would say in like band, like in like yeah. middle school. When a trumpeter kisses you, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, just, I've seen like solos of Dizzy Gillespie just going crazy and just like. <laughs> 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 Can you imagine your first date, like, oh, great night. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at the time of his death, Sax had 35 patents to his name and many ideas for other spectacular fantasies. His unproduced inventions include the Sax Thunder, which was a giant organ powered by a steam engine that was to be about 167 feet tall. And then, of course, there was the Saxo Cannon. <gasps> what was the Saxo Cannon? Describe it for me, and heck, why not even do a little drawing? Ooh. Now, I'm not the best artist, so That's I okay. apologize. I see some great drawings over there. How are we feeling? Not great. Okay, hands down. You know, like a rocket launcher, oh, but it kind of looks Whoa. like a saxophone. Like you could see at the top there, he's playing little buttons. Yeah. And uh, Steven, what do you uh, got? Mine's basically a, a, a saxophone with a big hole. Uh, 
but notice that the guy, his saxophone players are always like this. So they're always like, they're always yeah, leaning. Uh huh. So I thought he'd be leaning, but it's a saxophone that, that catches cannonballs? I don't know. Interesting. Oh, it ca it's an acceptor, too. Yes. Well, you know, you're both sort of in the ballpark, so I I'm gonna give a jelly bean to both of you. I know that means nothing, but it should mean something to you. Hey. That's great. I mean, it's a good drawing. I'll take it. Now, unlike his other inventions meant for military bands, the Saxo Cannon was to be an actual weapon. It was to be a mortar bullet 11 yards wide, weighing 550 tons. And Sachs believed it would be powerful enough to take out an entire city. Dude, so it's kind of <laughs> like what I was saying before, when you make a flute into a weapon. Oh exactly. My God. Fuck yeah, this guy was a genius. Not because he said something that was similar to me. Or maybe, well, maybe, maybe, it is, yeah, maybe it is because that's what I mean. I've heard of Oppenheimer, but be Boppenheimer? <laughs> <laughs> that's stupid, but it's good. Thank you. For the next century after Adolf's death, the saxophone barely survived. People thought it sounded too carnal, too voluptuous, which people often say about me as well. The friggin' Pope hated the dang thing, and few music schools were willing to teach it. Eventually, the instrument came to the Americas as part of the French military band led by Napoleon III in the 1860s. But it wasn't until the jazz world embraced the funny tutor that the saxophone assured its place not just in music history, but also in music future. Jazz, baby. I wonder what the popularity of the saxophone was before jazz. Like, mm. it probably was seen as like a very novel idea yeah. to implement this instrument that everyone hates. Though he never had much money, Sax knew he was leaving behind quite the legacy. As he boasted, quote, Before me, I am proud to say, the musical instrument industry was nothing, or next to nothing, in France. I created this industry. I carried it to an unrivaled height. I developed the legions of workers and musicians, and it is above all my counterfeiters who have profited from my work. Whew, hard to believe this guy stirred up so many enemies, right? Starting to get why he was a little unpopular. <laughs> yeah. I had not heard him speak until then, but yeah, I was like, hard. why is everyone giving this guy shit? <laughs> and he's like, the music industry is me. I'm not a businessman, I am the business. Man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> well, that concludes our history lesson. Now, in the past, we relied on a complicated algorithm to determine the history master, but I've since taken a large mallet to that stupid algorithm machine and left it to sit unsupervised in the Watcher Entertainment dumpster next to that equally stupid hologram box from last nice, season. Nice, dude. Yeah. I wish Fuck I could have been guy. there to fucking take a huge dump on that algorithm machine. Oh, yeah, I, I beat the living shit out of it. So, I'm gonna head backstage and try to do math on my own. In the meantime, enjoy this special performance from one of Adolf Sax's scrapped instrument prototypes. I'll see you in a bit. Boom! I forgot there were songs on the show. Oh, this is the best part. The mother of invention is both passion and intention, and the plight can be rewarding, but it also can drag ass. And every grand creation's just the final iteration in a cavalcade of pitiful rough drafts. And so, and so it's me, me. Failed instrument Failed prototype 73. And I sound like. And it sounds like. The most god awful rat that you ever hear. You wish a pack of hungry sewer rats would gnaw your ears. The drum go boom, and the horn will toot a toot. But I sound like a cow with hemorrhoids attempting to prove. Oh, baby, I sound bad. Recall the day when Adolf took me out to play and put his sweet wet Belgian lips upon my shiny little mouth and with his smooch and motor potent up against my special opening. What a dreadful horrid screeching I let out. And all the crowd when they heard my wretched sound, how they take it. Oh. Half the mezzanine ran out and laid down in the street. Oh, baby, 
was attacked by an angry mob who stuffed me in a sack with some stones and tossed me in the river. But I soon beckoned to some passers-by like when those kids found Jumanji. And so now I'm back to let the world hear my fucking terrible noise. Check it out, I'm horrible. Wait, wait, wait. More fucking cardio or something. Oh, God. Oh, well, I clearly could have used some extra pills on the side. Well, too bad. I guess I'll just have to go eat shit and die. A serenitat and a guitar shred. But the noise that I emit will have you begging for death. A baby. Oh, I sound bad. Guts, I um, I enjoy these now. Wow, bad instrument, but an absolutely stunning song. Uh, oh, now you guys are never gonna believe this, but I am bad at math. Okay. Okay. And frankly, I simply cannot bear the weight of choosing the winner. On one hand, Ryan, you're my best friend, and you saved the lives of me and my wonderful parents. On the other hand, Stephen, you're our guest, and you're a sweet little angel. Thank you. But this is a quiz show! There has to be a winner or people are gonna whine about it in the comments and maybe even dox me! What is this show anymore? I don't even understand what it- Hey, 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 son, huh? son, it's all right. You're doing a great job, sweetie. Oh, thanks, guys. Uh, how's it going adjusting to life millions of years in the future? Oh, pretty tight. Yeah, we learned about all the modern marvels like dogs, math, fax machines. <laughs> and I'm still getting the hang of the whole capitalism invention. Oh, are you thinking about getting a job? We've been faxing his resume to every number we could come up with. What What have you even done in this modern era worth putting on a resume? <laughs> Let's see. It says here, I learned the alphabet and I ate three dogs. Honey, four dogs. <laughs> hey, son, crazy pitch. But since we're unemployed and got nothing better to do, how about we pick the winner? Sure. I Steven, Ryan, are you guys down with that? Uh, no, that sounds weird. I'm fine with that. Okay. Yay! <laughs> okay, so, so I think the beef is boy. I, I gotta eat some beef with boy, though. I always have. Why? Why? I don't wanna Why? deal, I don't wanna deal with this. I don't wanna deal with this and get him all self conscious. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You, you know, he, he loves that man. He loves the beef boy. Because he's so deep. After dutiful consideration, a decision has been reached. We hereby award the coveted cap and title of History Lizard to Steven Lim. But also hereby award yet another coveted cap to our son's friend and our savior, Beef Boy. Wait, so we okay. both we both Whoa. get a cap? I'll wow, take this it. This has never happened. Oh man, this hey. is like a participation trophy. Yeah, yeah. Oh. high five. Yeah. Both teams played hard bullshit. Okay, guys, come on up here and get your hat. Steven. All right, you let's go. Cool. Right. <gasps> there you go. That's a real hat. Do I get to keep this? Yeah, you do. Well, I think you misspelled it here. Okay, guys, for the record, it's History Wizard. Yeah, History Lizard. We okay, well. It says lizard on there. That's close enough, I guess. Look at these guys with their coveted caps. It's a little weird that his says History Wizard and mine just says beef, Whoa, but you know, we'll good on you. look past that. Now that's friendship right there. Hey, well, Stephen Lim, thank you for being here. Ryan, thank you for being a friend. And to all you folks at home, thanks for watching Puppet History, where the details are always a little fuzzy. Vaya con Dios! <laughs> Well, I still recall the day when Adolf took me out to play and put his sweet wet Belgian lips upon my shiny little mouth. And with his smoochers motor bumping up against my special opening, what a dreadful horror screeching I let out. <laughs>